Hello there and welcome to a Guild Wars 2 Online PvP build guide. Today we're checking out the latest iteration of the Healing Bomb Engineer. We've made some adjustments since the last time we featured this build. It's become a lot more powerful, it's got fantastic support and you're near enough unkillable with this build. So first up, the weapon choice we've made here is dual pistols but it can be pretty much anything and it just depends on what amulet you want to pick. So we've gone in this build with the uh, Shaman's Amulet which is giving us more condition damage so we've gone with dual pistols but you can easily go with the rifle here if you decide to instead go with a Cleric's Amulet but we'll go into the Amulet choice a little bit later. That's pretty much what it comes down to. The shield can work effectively in this build as well but isn't too great, it's just a personal choice there if you want to run with that. So for the healing skill we've gone with the med kit giving us access to a lot of heals, some condition removal and some boons. A total of 10,500 healing there pretty much coming in from the bandage self on the tool belt and the drop bandage as well which is a hell of a lot really. Then we've also got the uh, bomb kit which is another must have for this build. Deals some condition damage and also gives us healing thanks to some trait choices which we'll go into later on. Giving us the big old bomb there on the tool belt as well which is an AOE blowout knockback. Absolutely brilliant um, ability there on a 30 second cooldown. Really really effective for controlling nodes. Next up Elixir S which shrinks yourself you recover from stunt and evade attacks. Pretty much a solid panic button which the previous build didn't have so that works really well. Um, also the tool belt version will either grant stability or stealth to uh, allies or yourself which is fairly effective. It's not amazing really. It's on 6 second cooldown which is a bit brutal but if you get stability when you're on a node it can be quite helpful. Um, next up Elixir C. You drop Elixir C converting all conditions into random boons. So there we go coming in with some really strong condition removal on both that ability and the one on the med kit which we didn't have in that previous version of the build and makes it much more effective. Lastly for the elite skill we've gone Supply Crate which is an AoE stun. Gives us some more bandages to give us even more healing. Uh, also gives us some turrets to help us control the node and stuff as well so it can be fairly helpful. This is basically a solid bunker build, you're just getting down a point and staying there. Uh, what I didn't mention was the Elixir C uh, utility belt skill which converts one condition to a random boon on allies for a little bit of team support there. But it's on a 30 second cooldown so it's not great unless you can get a few allies within the radius of the AoE. So for our rune choices we've gone with superior runes of the monk for four of them plus 75 healing, 10% boon duration and a 5% chance to gain health when you're hit. Then for the other two we've gone for the runes of mercy for 25 toughness and take less damage while reviving allies. Fairly standard choices here, you could go full into the runes of mercy but I like getting that extra bit of healing power and the boon duration in there. And that 5% chance to gain health when you're hit is relatively effective as you're going to be focused quite a lot with this build. Um, next up we've gone for the Sigil of Superior Life in our first pistol and then the Sigil of Energy in our second pistol. This is basically giving us a bit more survivability. If you do decide to go with the rifle, just take the Sigil of Superior Life. Next up, our amulet choices. You've got two choices here. So if you go for the Shaman's amulet, like I said before, you're going to want to go dual pistols. This gives us a little bit more condition damage and a, quite a high amount of toughness from it. Um, whereas the other option is the uh, Cleric's amulet giving us power instead of the condition damage, giving us less toughness but more healing power. So it depends on which way you want to go. Um, this is a very high toughness build we've got at the moment because we've got the condition removal there to deal with the conditions. So we've got the toughness dealing with direct damage and then we've got some good condition removal to deal with any conditions that build up on us. So we're fairly effective against that, um, which is why I decided to generally play with the PvP Shaman's Amulet. But if you do prefer the rifle as a general weapon, do go with the Cleric's Amulet instead as the added power will help. Just bear in mind you're going to be a bit more susceptible to any incoming direct damage um, with that sort of setup. So for the trade choices we've gone 10 points in explosives, 13 inventions and 13 alchemy. 10 points in explosives gives us create a bomb when you dodge and bombs and mines have a larger explosion radius. A pretty important trait to take there. And then 13 inventions, uh, game regeneration for 10 seconds while you're attacked with under 25% HP. Uh, really effective little uh, trait there, even though it's a very minor one, the extra regeneration will help because we've got to have a lot of healing up all the time with this build. Make yourself invisible when you become immobilized, again helpful, not a vital one to take but it's probably the best option out of the ones you have. All heal skills recharge when health reaches 25%, brilliant one here, 90 second cooldown on it which is quite harsh but uh, it's going to re-trigger all our healing skills when we hit 25% HP and we've got the toughness that we can actually manage to trigger them all off in time to get ourselves back up more HP so really really effective there. 25% movement speed while in combat, again this is quite important to take because it gives you the ability to dodge around people shooting from range. Um, a lot of like longbow uh, ranges and stuff like that, the projectiles are quite slow, it has been sped up a little bit but this gives you a bit more time to like uh, line of sight and stuff like that while you're in the middle of combat. 
Next up, 10% of healing is given in a bonus to power. This is quite an unfortunate one you have to get because it's a minor one. Uh, we don't really want to lose that healing there, but unfortunately we do. But it's worth it because we get the bomb explosions, heal allies there on the final one. You can only get it on the final points, but we had to go that far in. But this is the most important one to take here. So it's giving us a constant heal then from the bomb kit. Uh, then in alchemy, we've gone for drink elixir B at 75% HP. Elixir B... It is this one here, so you drink Elixir B to gain Fury, Might, Retaliation and Swiftness for anything between 42 seconds for Might and then 14 seconds for the rest of them. Again, fairly effective and that's just going to trigger at 75% HP. Uh, gain protection for 3 seconds whenever you are disabled, so st stun, days, knockback, knockdown, blah 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 will give you protection for a few seconds. This triggers every 5 seconds, so pretty much every time you are disabled at all it's going to trigger and help you out. 8% uh, chance to convert incoming conditions into boons, uh, fairly nice really, it's not exactly as massively effective and you can't rely on it, but it will help every now and again. Gain regeneration when using a kit, so again you're going to be using your med kit and your bomb kit pretty much all the time, so it's going to give us good regeneration uptime. Of course we've also got this one back here giving us 10 seconds when you hit 25% HP, so good all round regeneration uptime there. Deal 1% extra damage for each boon on you. Not massively effective really, um, we're not going to have a huge number of boons except of course if you have a lot of conditions and you trigger Alexa C. All in all that's not really going to help you that much. And then become immune to conditions when health is below 25% HP, a fantastic trait there. Uh, making you immune to any incoming conditions when your health gets that low. Making your condition builds really struggle to bring you down. Which is again why I went mainly for the toughness here in the amulet, giving us that more toughness so we can direct counter the direct damage as well. As we've already got some very very strong uh, anti-condition abilities and trait choices. Uh, so now we're going to get into a bit of gameplay. Uh, we've got a few different clips here. We're going to show you how this build really works and I'll explain as we go along. So this first clip is quite good at just showing the basic principles of how this build works. So we've got a ranger coming up against us here. He's got a longbow there. His other weapons are great swords. So two fairly powerful weapons for the long for the ranger. And he's also got a spider pet out at the moment. We're basically just going to tank him throughout this. There's no need to actually really kill him. We can keep him distracted up here, then he's not applying any pressure on the rest of the map, and there's no chance of him actually managing to kill us. Because just here, we're just laying down bombs, dealing to damage his pet, not coming off the node. He's going to back away, try to go for long range with his longbow, which so it deals more damage, and we're just have to counter that quite nicely, keep ourselves healed. Uh, he drops down a barrage on us here, which is a fairly powerful um, attack for the ranger in general, but again, we're countering it with laying down some bombs. Healing ourselves using the condition removal there and swapping it again into our med kit, laying down all the um, uh, sorry the bandages and also using our tool belt bandage ability to get ourselves back up to full HP. Swapping back into bombs, getting some more healing. Big old bomb there, knocking him out of the node. And he swaps into his greatsword now and trying to apply some pressure on us close up, trying to keep his feet on the actual node itself. But again, this is just not going to do anything for him. We were able to outmaneuver uh, him as well because we've got the 25% increased speed. Um, and every time we get low on HP, we're just switching into the med kit, healing ourselves up, laying down those. We've popped off our elite skill there as well, so you can see the number of bandages that's created. So we've got now a huge amount of healing around us, there's no chance of being able to bring us down. And we're going to apply a little bit more pressure there, because we're into our pistol so we can actually dish out some more damage. You're not really going to be doing a lot with the bombs at all, um, damage-wise. You're going to have to really swap into the pistols to do anything. But while you're in the pistols, you're susceptible to taking a lot more damage. So the generally staying in bombs, just tanking it. You can see it there, just ticking it away. Every time we get too low, we're just going to pop over and pick up a bandage if we need it he's just not able to do enough damage to actually finish us off and this is the job of this build is just to sit there on point guarding it nice and safely waiting for support which has now arrived and then they can spike down the ranger and finish him off they've managed to control the node and it's pretty solid for just a general bunker build just to hold down against single opponents two opponents and just hold the point very well and just say they need support when you need it and they'll come in and finish them off for you so that's the first clip. This same clip's a little bit later in the match, and we're just going to about to switch over to it now. So this clip's just a few seconds later in the match, and we're laying down some bombs, healing up our teammates there. Of course, their natural regeneration will kick in and heal themselves up anyway. But we've got some enemy players coming in now from the blue team. We've got control of all three nodes at the moment, and they're trying to pressure us here at the center. But we're taking up those points all the time. Notice how we're keeping our feet on the node at all times. That's our priority. We don't want to give them any chance to get any uh, ticks off of it. But we're also supporting our teammates by laying down those bombs, constantly giving healing. You see how quickly we're able to instantly trigger that one skill there on the bomb, it's just constantly giving AoE healing around us. Of course, we can also use our med kit to lay down bandages and our elite skill as well, of course, to drop down a load of bandages when that comes off cooldown. 
See the number of players here from the blue team at the moment, there's quite a few around. There are a lot of those are Mesmer clones though, so do beware. But we're just basically controlling this node. There's no real pressure coming on any of our players. You can see up in the top left hand corner, the only one really taking pressure there is our Necromancer friend. They've gone down and we have to quickly heal them back up. We take less damage because of our abilities and we have to get them back up before they're even able to finish us off even though they did have the time warp down from the Mesmer. There goes down one of the players from the blue team. And the second one as well. Uh, no, sorry, that's the same. That's the same player down there twice. The other player is being forced away. Good crowd control there from our teammates. You can see just these constant green numbers flying up on the screen. That's just our healing, and that's what all we're doing. Just constantly supporting our teammates. We're also keeping their minions alive and stuff like that as well. Um, the AOE support from this build is just absolutely fantastic, and that's how it really works in a team composition. You saw earlier how it works in one v ones. A couple other clips just to show you now. So this next clip's right from the start of the match on the um, Legacy of the Foe Fire. We've got two players coming over to the waterfall and we're going to try and defend it against them. So we're in our bombs again at the beginning. We're getting interrupted there, which is causing us problems. That is, of course, a weakness to this build, but it does recover fairly well from it, in fact. Um, so yeah, we're basically just laying down bombs here, giving ourselves a bit more healing. We've taken quite a bit of spike damage there. Don't forget, both these players have just spawned. Their full burst rotations are in effect. And now there's three players now from the red team against us. So constantly laying down the bombs, getting forced off the node once again, but we're still coming back on trying to keep our feet on it as much as possible more and more bombs going down all the time trying to keep ourselves alive laying down the med kits now healing ourselves up even more um, laying down the one to try and get some condition removal off unfortunately we've got quite a few conditions on us at the moment our condition removal's come up so we're able to trigger that get rid of all those conditions off of us and our teammates now coming back in to support us after capturing the other two nodes so we've managed to keep three of their players distracted over here which is a massive difference in a 5v5 game you think they've got three players trying to defeat one of us they couldn't bring us down our teammates have now come in to help us clean up and we're just constantly now going into our supporting role supporting our teammates trying to keep them alive running around laying down bombs trying to get the finishers off trying to get revives off if we're needed there we go for one finisher coming in there. We've got one player forced off the node. The other one's going down fairly quickly, this Necromancer. Looks like they've got a commander icon up on them as well, and they've gone down. So you can see the basic principle behind this build is just to sit on the point, defend it as well as you can against multiple opponents. We have three people on us then, and they still were just not able to defeat us because of the constant incoming healing. So this next clip is on the Battle of Kylo, and we're trying to defend the central node on the map. We've got two players from the blue team coming up. Three players, sorry, from the blue team coming up. Uh, against two of us from the red team. So we managed to get the central node neutralised, but they're trying to cap it. So we're cut slightly outnumbered at the moment, and I think our teammate is going down in the corner of our view as well. They're taking some pretty heavy damage being pushed away. But we've got some incoming fire there from the um, trebuchet going to support us quite effectively. So we're laying down bombs uh, on the point. We've now managed to capture the node, keeping ourselves healed. So we've got some incoming damage there from that engineer. They weren't really able to get us below the point where they met us at, though, HP-wise. We were just tanking it fairly effectively. Switching into our med kit, laying down the big old bomb, which will force anyone off so we can get off a bit of healing gives a chance there we go all our medkit skills now back off cooldown healing ourselves back up to the full hp switching back into those bombs giving us even more healing so we've got two players on us at the moment the guardian and a ranger still just not able to dish out enough damage between them uh, having to dodge off the node there trying to get out of the way of that full um, damage of the um, barrage that was coming down on us also trying to avoid getting knocked down there we don't want to get interrupted in this build you want to keep a constant flow of healing and coming because if you stop you're going to get hurt a lot worse uh, of course, that was the invisibility triggering there, giving us some more support. One player gone down from the blue team. This is, of course, the trebuchet that's bringing them down. It's not our actual damage that's finishing them off, but we were able to keep them distracted and keep them trying to push us with the trebuchet able to finish them off and put them into the down state, and then we just pick up two very quick and very easy kills. So that's basically the principles behind this build. You're just going to sit on a node, tanking anyone who comes towards you, healing yourself up near constantly. There's no reason you should not be healing at any one time, whether it's bombs, and then you want to be triggering your medical supplies whenever you need it from the med kit and the bandage self. All round, this is a fantastic build. It's a great one as well if you're trying to learn how to bunker because you don't really have to focus too much on the enemy. It's more focusing on yourself and learning your timings and you're getting that stuff kind of right before you're worrying too much about what the enemy's doing. You don't really have to react so much um, towards them. So a great build all rounder there. Give us any uh, feedback below if you can think of anything we can do in the future, any more builds you want us to check out or anything, if you've got any good links. Hope you all enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe and leave us some feedback. Thank you all very much.